Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Keeneland at Home, presented by Central Bank. I'm your host, Christina Blacker, and I do hope that you have enjoyed the first two days of this summer meet at Keeneland. We are not slowing down. We're going to jump right into the racing action once more today with a nine-race program. And we also have a couple of feature races on the program this afternoon. The Beaumont at seven furlongs, presented by Keeneland Select, and also the Maker's Mark Mile. These are two of the highlights each and every year at Keeneland, and we are thrilled to be bringing those races to you today as part of that nine race program. I do hope that you're enjoying Keeneland at Home just in general, and please be sure to use the hashtag Keeneland at Home to let your friends and your family know that you are watching the racing and that you are hopefully making a little bit of money with us. As I mentioned yesterday, you can download a digital program on the Keeneland website. If you head to keeneland.com and then go to the racing tab, just scroll down, you'll see right there where you can download the free digital program. And there are also some Keeneland at Home kits. If you'd like to bring a little piece of Keeneland home to your house, that is all available on the website for you as well. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the show today. We're going to talk to you about the very special relationship between Maker's Mark and Keeneland. This goes back a long way, and I really enjoyed learning the history myself, so I hope that you will as well. We will bring Ellis Starr back for some racing analysis. He gave you another winner yesterday, several winners, and hopefully you had that horse in the last race. I know a lot of people were listening because the price came down, ended up at 9-2 to two at post time, uh, started at 10-1 to one as far as the morning line. Another betology lesson coming your way today to sort of help you figure out how to pick your horses. And then we'll talk a little bit about how Maker's Mark and the PDJF are teaming up this year. Okay, so let's get started with our traditional call to the post. Each and every day, we have asked a local musician to put their spin on it. And today is Lexington-based bluegrass group, Kentucky High Times. You can find more on their Facebook page if you'd like to hear a little bit more from Kentucky High Times. As I said off the top of the show, the history and the relationship between Maker's Mark and Keeneland goes back a long way, all the way to the very beginning. Thomas Bolton has been helping us out with some different cocktail recipes throughout the week so far, but today he's going to teach us a little bit about that history and talk about today's Keeneland Private Select Bottle. Take a look. Hey everybody, my name's Thomas Bolton. I'm the distillery diplomat for Maker's Mark. And today I wanna to talk to you about the partnership between Maker's Mark and Keeneland. A lot of people don't know, but the very first cases of Maker's Mark ever purchased were poured at Keeneland. And the partnership did not stop there. In 1997, we started making specialty Maker's Mark bottles in partnership with Keeneland that would benefit different charities. The proceeds from this bottle, which you see right here, which is this year's bottle, go to the Permanently Disabled Jockey Fund, or PDJF. Now, Makers Mark and Keeneland have been partners since 1953. And something special that I wanna to talk to you about today is the Keeneland Private Select, which you can only get at the racetrack, or if you wanna buy yourself a bottle, there's only one place you can get it, and that's at Keeneland Mercantile in downtown Lexington. Just like the very first bottles of Makers ever poured, we're at Keeneland Racetrack. The very first private select that we ever did was at Keeneland. Now this bourbon has a great nose. You get a lot of vanilla, a little bit of honey, and some caramel. The one I have is 110.5 proof. Now something interesting about the Keeneland bottle, unlike any of our other private selects, is that Keeneland does not want their recipe on the bottle. I believe they are the only private select in the nation that does not share their recipe. So that's their proprietary recipe. Like I said, there's only one place to taste it, and that's at Keeneland. There's only one place to buy a bottle, and that's at Keeneland Mercantile. Cheers to you. Cheers to Keeneland. Have a great race day.
Cheers, Thomas. Thank you so much for that. I do want to let you know that you can buy your own Keelan Private Select bottle downtown at the Keelan Mercantile Shop. And also for today, Makers Mark, who is a founding partner in the Lee Initiative, they're going to team up with Keelan for a $10,000 donation to the Lee Initiative. Now, what that is, is basically a restaurant reboot program. They're going to purchase food from sustainable farmers that are local and provide that to local restaurants. So on behalf of Makers Mark, mild day, uh, hats off to Makers Mark and to Keeneland for that very generous donation. And you can also learn a little bit more if you like about that program at makersmark.com. Okay, it's time to bring my partner in the show in today, Ellis Starr, the man who is making you all some money out there. He's giving you winners on the first couple days of this program. So Ellis, we are not slowing down, pedal to the metal. And I have to ask, I, did you make a little money in the last race yesterday, even though the price came down on Militarist? Yeah, that was a very nice play, and and Militarist did go down. He actually crossed the line of three to one, which happens sometimes. But it was good to know that my opinion was validated by other racing fans out there, and I'm very pleased that four of the six races we've done, the top picks have won. Uh, the one yesterday, Dos Vinos, was a strong winner at a short price, but still ran very well. And I'm very pleased. You know, it's tougher sometimes to pick the races to talk about than it is to get the races right. And so that's also lucky. And the horses had to cooperate. And I'm pleased about that as well, Christina. We're spoiled with all that good racing. Plenty of races to choose from. So I definitely want to talk about the features on the program today. Ellis, we will get to the Beaumont presented by Keeneland Select and also to the Makers Mark Mile. But let's start first with race number three, because we're talking about a pretty salty allowance group in here. Non-winners of one. Six and a half furlongs is the distance. I want to go to Alfie Solomon, the son of Cantheros. So this is a little bit of a mystery to me because it's the dirt debut for this horse. What do you make of his chances? Well, yesterday with Militarist, you know, Stats Trace Lens helped me and give a pedigree analysis. And I think there's a pedigree analysis here. Alfie Solomon's first one, first time out last summer uh, on the turf at Kentucky Downs, which is very tough because all those fields are so big. And then he ran ninth and then fifth off a layoff from October to June. He tries dirt for the first time. He's working strongly over the surface. Uh, the last workout fans can see when they get the free digital program at Keeneland, 47 and three-fifths, the fourth best of 39, very strong. Wesley Ward off to a big start as always. And he's likely the lone front runner here because when he did win his debut, he did go wire to wire. And looking at the rest of the field, there's not a lot of other early speed. Now, on that pedigree note, Christina, what's interesting is the damn meat expectations produced a horse named World of Trouble, who you'll know, who won $1.2 million. Mostly Nuren is one of the top turf sprinters in the country, but he did win on dirt. He won on dirt in a race that came off the turf. He won another race on dirt. I have no question. There's no, I have no problem accepting that Alfie Solomon's going to run well on the dirt. So some versatility in that pedigree. Ellis, let's jump back down to the rail with the one Godzilla, Santana and Steve Asmussen team up with this Colt. Now he was impressive in his career debut and then they threw him right into the deep end. You look through his running lines. He ran into Basin and Tis the Law in his next two grade one attempts. Certainly some class relief for him today. Absolutely. Well, he won his, he broke his maiden at first asking powerfully by four lengths at Saratoga, which is as tough a meet as Keeneland is when you have debuts like this. And then third and fourth, not disgraced in those two big stakes for two-year-olds. Given a lot of time off to mature, he already won fresh. We know it can win fresh. Again, the workout, uh, 59 flat from the gate, uh, best of 13 on the day on June 24th. So you can see he's fit. And of course, as you mentioned, he did run fourth behind the leader in the three-year-old division. Tis the law. There's no question he should fire a nice shot here. One more in this group, Alice. How about the six, Hero's Reward? He has a little bit of tactical speed, and Tyler Gaffleone really seems to have the keys to this horse. Well, Gaffleone's two for two since getting on. One was for a trainer, Wayne Catalano, and then he was claimed, which means purchased out of a race, and he came right back to win as strongly or more strongly. He earned a 95 Echo Bay speed figure in the field, which is actually the second best, the best winning and the second best figure in the field. He fits at the level, even though he's been running and claiming races, and I think he has the chance to get through here. All right, so those are the selections from Ellis Star for race number three. Ellis, as far as uh, the remainder of the program, we still have those two features to get to. But race number six is another allowance event, but this is a non-winners of two. So just slightly uh, tougher level. And the seven, Al Mithmar, bit of a price for Phil D'Amato. That last race was at Churchill. He was sixth, going the mile in a 16th distance, but a big difference in distance today as he cuts back. Right. When horses cut back in distance, fans should know they usually become closers because they're going to run a lot 
faster early and these horses are going to find themselves further back it's exactly what he did one before last when he ran in that sprint on may 24th when he was fifth early and he won nicely that also came with the addition of blinkers blinkers the little hood the horses wear with plastic on the sides that covers a little bit and it helps them to focus on the race so that's the race he can run back to he also gets a very made to order pace scenario here I think there's up to four or five horses, the one called Early Mischief and Much Better for sure, who are going to want the lead. It puts Almathar in a great spot, fourth or fifth in the early stages. And so I'm looking for him to repeat that race on May 24th and get up. Okay, so those selections will help you out through the earlier portion of the program. Then we get into the later half of the card, and especially with that late pick four, which does include your two stakes races today. I want to jump to the Beaumont Ellis, presented by Keeman Select, grade three event, seven furlongs as a distance for these three-year-old fillies. And we do want to let you know that Mike McCarthy, the trainer of speech, has confirmed she's going to scratch in favor of the Central Bank Ashland coming up on the Saturday card at Keeman. So Ellis, that really does change this race because she is a horse with a lot of ability. But I want to talk about the filly that was drawn just to her outside. Four graces is proven not only at the level and the distance. You have to take a second or maybe even third look in here. I think she'll be a top selection for a lot of folks. Well, with speech out now, four graces really becomes the favorite in the race. She was three to one in the morning line. She'll be lower. And she did win the Dogwood Stakes, a similar grade three at seven furlongs last month. So she fits on all counts. That earned her a 92 equity speed figure, which is a measurement of time that we can use to compare horses across different tracks and not look at time itself. And she earned a 99 winning before that. So she certainly has the look here and will be one of the two horses I think can win this race. What about to the outside, Ellis? Turtle Tracks for Ian Wilkes. She seems like a bit of an up-and-comer in this division. Maybe this is the day that she breaks out. What do you think? Well, she was 12-1 to 1 to start, but with the scratch of the favorite, Christina, she's going to be lower odds. I still think she's bettable, particularly to win. She ran a career best race last time out, even though it's second. Fans that get that free digital program can see that she rallied from fifth to second by a horse named Frank's Rockette. Now, Frank's Rockette came back to win the victory ride stakes last week on July 4th. So there's a lot of improving that Turtle Tracks can do based on the fact that the horse that beat her is in really top form. Also, the sixth horse, believe it or not, out of that race came back to win the Delaware Oaks, an upset of 38 to 1 last week. So Turtle Tracks is the other horse I'm going to use with four graces in this race. Bit of a wild result in that Delaware Oaks uh, this past week. Ellis, let's move ahead to race number eight. This is the Maker's Mark Mile Grade 1 event. $300,000 on the line for four-year-olds and up they will go one mile over the turf course and there's just a lot of different directions to go in here ellis it's kind of hard to know where to start but i do want to start with a bit of a price english b is the five and she he rather was so close to that victory last out at churchill downs and he has a wicked turn of foot but Right. So English B is certainly a contender for this race. He has to be used if you bet the exact and trifecta. And English B is a horse that really ran his best race. He ran his best race back in February in a similar mile race called the Canadian Turf in Florida when he lost by a half a length. He was 11 lengths back early in that one. And last time out, he got beaten in the neck. Either of those two efforts would really have him in the thick of it. And he is a four-year-old. We talked about this yesterday. Four-year-olds, even this time of year, still have some improving they can do. He hasn't shown he can do it in a grade one race yet. But he's got a shot, and he's 10 to 1. What about a little farther to the outside? There are some familiar names there, War of Will, but also Next Shares. Next Share was the 2018 Shadwell Turf Mile winner. He really likes it. He's at his best over this course. Well, we'll talk about him and the other two that I like as well, Raging Bull and Without Parole. They all come out of the same race, which was identical race to this one, a grade one race, the Shoemaker Mile at Santa Anita at the end of May. And Next shares was a fast closing second to Raging Bull. He was very far back, 15 lengths behind the leaders after a half mile been run. And he got up. He was fourth. Uh, he, he won the Sadwell Turf Mile, which is the fall equivalent of the Maker's Mile, in 2018. And then he missed by a nose in the Kilro Mile in March before uh, that race, before running second last time out to Raging Bull. He's got a big turn of foot. He's got a win at Keeneland. Uh, John Velasquez has ridden him well in the past, and he's certainly a contender here. Let's talk about Raging Bull just a little more. He is the number four in the group. He's nine to five on the morning line. Joel Rosario will be right back aboard. I was there for the Shoemaker Mile uh, last time at Santa Anita. I mean, this horse really does 
present himself. You can tell when he was going to run well. He looks like a million dollars out there. And he did so back on May 25th at Santa Anita. And he also has one of those turns of foot that you cannot ever count him out from however far back he is in the early pace scenario. I find, Ellis, that he's just so good right now and is maybe even eligible to improve today. Yeah, he's got a gear, which is interesting. He was eighth on the turn with a quarter mile to go in the Shoemaker, and then he was first. And in, so in about an eighth of a mile, he made up four and a half lengths and just went off, and no one could catch him after that. Joel Rosario rides him really well. He had been a good three-year-old back in 2018 when he won the Hollywood Derby, uh, and he got back to that form after a few misses and close finishes before that. He got up in time in that key race. Uh, that turned out to be a productive race as well. And he certainly is a contender in this race. What about his stablemate in here without parole, Ellis? Without parole had so much trouble in the Shoemaker mile. Had he ended up with a clean trip, do you think he might have been able to beat his stablemate there? Yeah, I watched the race. I think he would have probably won the race. It's a very critical stage in that stretch run about the eighth pole. Uh, he just was behind a wall of horses and the jockey had to just stop riding intermittently between that and the 16th. By the time he got out, he made up from fifth to third, but it was too late. They both been working in company, Chad Brown. I could, you could look at the program and see those workouts are the same distance and the same date. So they've probably been working in company and he was the favorite at two to one in that race. This was a very good three-year-old back in England. He won a race called the St. James Palace at Royal Ascot. And he's getting back to that form. So I'm going to give him a slight edge here. He was so highly thought of. He was entered the Breeder Cup mile in his U.S. debut. Do you just combine those four horses that we talked about today, Ellis, and try to play an exacta or a trifecta perhaps? Yeah, I think we'll do that. Dollar exacta box with four, five, eight, and nine. Win if any two of the four finish first and second in any order. The other two can run badly. It's a $12 bet. If the favorites come in one and two, it's probably going to be break even. But next share is at eight to one. Uh, might make the profit for us if he can get in there and split the Chad Brown uh, charges, Raging Bull, and without parole. All right, Alice, good luck once more today. Thank you for all of the winners thus far, and let's go get a few more on this Friday program. Well, thanks, Christine. I hope the horses cooperate again today for everybody. Fingers crossed out there. Also, as far as uh, the Chad Brown entrance in there, Chad Brown is one away from 100 grade one victories in his career. I mean, that is a stat that is mind boggling and he very well could earn it today in the Maker's Mark mile. So that's your very advanced look at the handicapping with Ellis Star and also some horses and some prices that you can jot down for yourself. But if you've learned a little bit over the program in the last few days and maybe you're starting to download that digital program, handicap yourself, find your own horses, we want to help you continue to do so and to continue to learn about this great game of thoroughbred racing. Let's go to today's Bedology segment. <music> If there's one thing to always remember when betting on horse racing, it's this. There are no bad bets. It's true. Any horse can win any given race. In fact, the favorite only wins 25% of the time. Picking the right horse and placing the right bet is just as much an art as it is a science. If you haven't yet, go watch our first two videos on the basic bets of win, place, and show and exotic bets like Exactus, Trifectus, and Superfectus. You can find those videos on Keeneland's YouTube channel in the Betologist playlist. Okay, back to today's Betology lesson, how to pick a horse. Broadly speaking, there are two types of bets. The first is called a hunch bet. We like to call that betting with your heart. Pick the gray horse. Pick the horse with the blue saddle towel. Or pick the horse with kitten in its name. Whatever appeals to you, go for it. Hunch betting is all about having fun, win or lose. Handicapping, on the other hand, is the science of evaluating many pieces of information on each horse and making an educated prediction as to what the outcome of that race will be. This is for people who enjoy analyzing information, perfecting their own strategy, and challenging themselves to come out ahead, making more money than they bet. Handicapping always starts with the race program. In a race program, you can find information on every horse in every race. You can look at a horse's career record, pedigree, speed rating, owner, jockey, and much, much more. It's all about finding advantages and beating the odds. But remember, 
there are no bad bets. In the next episode of Lessons in Betology, we'll be diving into how to read a racing program. Until then, try your luck with a hunch bet or make your own luck through handicapping on Keeneland Select. It's free, easy to use, and lets you bet on any track from anywhere. Sign up at KeenelandSelect.com. All right, that's it for today. See you next time. So whether it's your hunch bet or with your handicapping, good luck this afternoon, Rachel. Thank you so much for that. And I can promise you that if you are invested in the race, if you've made a horse that is your selection for that race, it'll definitely make each and every one of those nine races out there today that much more exciting. Keeneland at Home continues, presented by Central Bank today. And each and every day we have introduced you to a different charitable initiative that is giving back and giving back within the racing industry and also beyond. And so our friends at Makers Mark, they have not slowed down today. They are going all in with the charitable donations. Each and every year, they have a commemorative bottle to benefit one particular charity. This year, it's the PDJF. That's the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. It's a fund that is near and dear to the hearts of all of the thoroughbred racing fans. And some of your favorite jockeys are here to tell you about that today. In the 1950s, the very first case of Maker's Mark was served at Kingley Racetrack. The proceeds have always gone to nonprofit charitable organizations. $50,000 from the proceeds of the bottle we go to the PDJF. To help the jockeys to pay the bill. PDJF steps in, helps them with everything they need. Take care of the jockeys throughout the country who get hurt in the racetracks. The PDJF, the important organization to all riders because they could happen to each and every one of us at any time. My favorite stakes win at Keenan would be the Bria Scott Mai with uh, Tepin. Winning my first great run at Keenan. Hands down, my two makers mark wins. Winning my first bluegrass with uh, the wonderful Holy Bull. Thanks Keenan and makers mark for uh, the contributions from the bottle. I feel like the bottle is beautiful. They've done a great job with it. Very happy to be part of it. And we thank Makers Mark and Kingdom for being a big part of that. They've done so much for us, and it's greatly appreciated. I can tell you I've had a chance to see that bottle. It's absolutely beautiful. The jockeys did sign them uh, themselves, and you almost don't want to open it. It is really a wonderful memento, and so I hope that you'll go to Maker's Mark if you're interested and learn a little bit more about it. You can also go to pdjf.org if you would like to donate because they do rely on these types of charitable initiatives and the generous donations from the racing fans. Time to lighten it up once more before we wrap up the program today. Kurt Becker, he is two for two with his witty calls on your Keeneland home videos. We have two more submissions for you today. One from Lisa Fernandez with her dog, Kenzie, and also from Kurt and Sarah Cahill with the Quarantine Babies. Take a look. And here we have Kenzie the Golden Puppy, all new meaning to the phrase wet track here. Not sure if Kenzie's racing an unseen opponent, maybe a school of fish. Now her upcoming schedule is busy. She is slated for events that are scheduled to take place in the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and you're looking at the early favorite for the Great Lakes Triple Crown Series. And they are off in the quarantine baby boom. The field is all lined up here. They all came away to a perfect start. In fact, they admittedly all came away to a very cute start as well. Here on the near side, this one is nursing the lead. Uh, actually, they're, they're all nursing the lead. Now, there's mom. Mom has to remain impartial. She's proud of them all, a little weary, but proud. Thanks so much to Kurt Becker for that. And a salute to all the quarantine moms out there. Am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel your pain. Let's move ahead here. And I wanted to remind you about what is coming up tomorrow. So we have six stakes races on the Saturday program. And this is just a little programming reminder. If you're unable to be at home and watching on TV or streaming online, maybe you're out in the car, you're running errands, it's Saturday, got a lot going on. You can also listen on the radio. So we have a day at Keeneland which will be presented by Toyota, Keeneland and UK have teamed up for a four-hour radio program. This will be on Saturday from 2 to 6 p.m. It's going to be hosted by Tom Leach, the voice of the Wildcats. He's going to give you all of that Saturday Stakes coverage, as well as some really fantastic interviews with both Keeneland and UK personalities. So you can enjoy that from 2 to 6 p.m. And it is on 630 WLAP, also WLAP.com slash listen. 
and you can find it on iHeartRadio as well. And then for those of you that might listen on the radio to your horse racing quite a bit, you'll certainly know HRRN, the Horse Racing Radio Network. They are bringing you a special one-hour broadcast tomorrow. That starts at 5 o'clock of the Toyota Bluegrass, and you can find them on Sirius Channel 219, XM201, or locally in Lexington at 96.1. So it's time for us to wrap up because we are not too far away from that first post. Don't forget, 105 Eastern is when we do kick off the nine race program today. Scott Hazelton and Gabby Gaudette will have full coverage and analysis all throughout the afternoon. And you can go ahead and watch and listen online and on TVG with my colleagues as well. I want to give a special thanks not only to our friends at Central Bank for helping us bring you another day of Keeneland at home, but also to Makers Mark and Keeneland Select sponsoring our two big races today, the Beaumont race number seven and the Makers Mark Mile, which is race number eight. And then also everybody that makes this show possible each and every day, our friends at Switcher Studio and the generous sponsors that do include TVG, Kentucky Utilities, Keeneland Select, Toyota, Central Bank, Coolmore, and everyone else. For Ella Starr, who is continuing to give you those winners, the entire Keeneland team, I'm Christina Blacker. Enjoy the races today. Good luck, and we will see you right back here tomorrow morning.